This morning I was uh, not awakened, but the first text I got was from the hospital CEOs talking about the fact that they were uh, they'd, they'd about hit capacity. Uh, we talk frequently, um, almost daily recently. We announced this morning 1,216 positive cases. And when you do the progression between the positives to the hospitalizations, how many days it takes, to the ICU, to the ventilators, to we hope not deaths, but the bottom line is we think by next Wednesday we're going to need another 200 plus hospital rooms given that capacity. And so I immediately got on the phone with the governor's office and said, we got an emergency, we need help. Now we are setting up this evening four pressurized tents that will be available at various sites on the hospital grounds to take any overflow that's required. And I understand that these uh, pressurized tents can even do surgery and everything. So it's, they're there on the hospital grounds. Our number one priority would be asking Beaumont to allow us to put non-COVID patients there. So that process is in the works and the governor has, has affirmed that. And uh, Judge Samaniego and I were on a call this afternoon with the, uh, with the governor's office uh, confirming all of that. But uh, I reached out to all of our delegation, um, to uh, the ones that have been helpful, uh, Senator Cornyn. In fact, as he was on the Senate floor and came off and called me, I talked to uh, Congressman Hurd, who's helped us with FEMA and other things. This is a, it has to take a joint effort between FEMA, the D uh, Department of Defense, and uh, HHS. And so the hospital executives have all been in there, and uh, we're just in our emergency operations center under, uh, under the direction of Chief Mario D'Agostino, and we're just monitoring. This is a crisis situation. We've implemented some changes over the last two weeks. You'll recall a week ago Thursday, I went to 50% capacity and restricted restaurants to close their kitchens by 9 o'clock. Um, but that, that was done in advance of trying to stop any limitations through the governor's office because we could change my order in a 24-hour process. But our trauma service area had exceeded 15% by Sunday of last week, of this, this past Sunday. So by virtue of that, the governor put a restriction in where we are at 50% capacity, which we'd already done, but it will take seven days of less than 15% um, uh, COVID hospitalizations in our, in our uh, uh, hospitals. And I'll tell you right now, we're well over 30%. So we were a long way from that. But what we're finding out in, in, in the deep dive in the data that uh, uh, Angela Mora has talked about is that, uh, and I've only got the, the data from, um, that we did from, uh, we, did, we looked at 2,404 cases over a two week span from October 4th to October the 20th. And 37% of those positives were from visiting the, the stores and big box stores, the Walmarts and others. 22.5% were from restaurants and 19% had traveled to Mexico. That's the primary bulk of where we were. Large gatherings, that seems to be a discussion among politicos, only 4% were from large gatherings. And we've stopped all large gatherings outdoors. Indoors is still subject to the capacity uh, uh, of that facility. But the bottom line is we, we need to have people, this last Thursday we talked about we want to have, we don't want to have multiple uh, families and, and groups going to, to shop, which is kind of part of our culture here and multi-generation. If you can, if you're, if you're not a single parent with children, try to go with only one, try to send only one member of your family to the stores. And uh, we know that the stores are doing some more deep cleaning. Uh, I think Walmart announced yesterday that they were closing their dire store yesterday at two o'clock for deep cleaning through tomorrow. Uh, and reopening Sunday. So that needs to continue. And uh, I will say that I'm on, this evening I will be getting on the phone with uh, Judge Samaniego, talking to the governor's office and asking, are there other measures that we can take to try to stop this spread? It's not good. It's serious. And uh, the people of El Paso need to understand that. You know, Mayor Margo, this, this relates a little bit to the story I'm working on Monday where a uh, prominent cardiologist here in El Paso, uh, you know, he's told me uh, we're at the point where non-COVID patients are dying because of COVID patients, meaning the ERs are packed, 
patients that are there for uh, you know a, a different issue like cardiac arrest or whatever are having to wait in the ER some unfortunately coding in the ER because there's just no room for you to put somebody who is in urgent need right now because everything's at capacity your level of concern over that Mayor Margo well, it's critical. I mean, that's why we're trying to figure out where we can go for hospital space and send non-COVID uh, patients to to uh, to William Beaumont and free up the rooms here. And you, yes, we know people are not going to the hospitals because they're concerned about COVID and other things. And that and that's just that's hurting the the health of the individuals, their families, and others. Um, but the, the bulk of our positives are still over 50 percent are still coming from from uh, El Paso ones who are less. Than 40 years of age, and those, you know, I know that millennial generation thinks you're invincible. You're not, and frankly, you're spreading it. But the the uh, that's why we've requested the governor's office to send more staff. We've already had something like close to 300 nurses come in. We had 100 a week ago Tuesday. These tents were requested last Thursday, and they're here being set up today. We're also looking at uh, uh, mobile trucks. To come in to do ambulatory care and I think you can even do surgeries in those and have those parked at the hospitals. Uh, the governor's office has been totally responsive. Um, it said we will do whatever you request and whatever you need. And so um, as I say I'm not sure what other actions we need to take. I've got to be in I'm going to be in um, in close conversation with Judge Samaniego and together we'll talk to to the governor. Remember, the governor is the only one who can do any form of a shutdown. Uh, I, do, I don't have that control, nor does Judge Samaniego. But we want to look at that. Also, one of the concerns that we're having is because there is no more uh, payment protection, cover, uh, pay, uh, payroll payments that were done under the COVID relief that the federal government did, we are concerned that it appears that people who may have COVID are going to work because that's their paycheck. And it's a it's a financial issue, and they know they need to if they if they don't go to work they don't get paid, and that's another concern. That's why we need uh, the uh, uh, Washington to respond. Um, so we're hitting that. I talked to uh, Lubbock is having the same issues. They're not quite as bad as ours, or quite as severe. I talked to the uh, the mayor of uh, Lubbock uh, this afternoon. Um, we're looking at everything. We're looking at what they did in Hidalgo County to, to deal with the surges down there that have mitigated. And uh, we're trying anything we can. But the main thing is people has tried, and as simple as it sounds, you got to wear face coverings, and you got to maintain distancing, and you got to wash your hands. But we're going to look at anything we can to help stop this. And I think if we can get, if we can get Beaumont, if we can't get Beaumont, we've got, what we've got is... Uh, is these uh, these tents and others, and we will set up a some sort of a field hospital if we have to do that as well. You know, it's really disappointing because it, it kind of has been that you go by the honor system, the honor system of you know not going to gatherings, always wearing your mask, washing your hands, doing everything that you have to do. Yet some people are just still not doing it. And, and you've also mentioned the importance of keeping this economy alive, which is disastrous right now if, if we do have to end up you know, forfeiting our local economy. But do you think that right now a shutdown is necessary? And I know that you can't put it in place, and I know that, you know, uh, uh, Judge Samaniego can't put it in place, but would you like the governor to be able to, uh, you know, put in a shutdown for maybe two weeks here in El Paso to, to stop this spread? I'm amenable to do anything that will stop this spread at this juncture. I also recognize, though, that we have a serious economic impact here. We have had that. And it is imperative that we balance that. I mean, we're on a, you know, I talk about an unequal balancing act, uh, but it's really we're kind of on a tight wire here, trying to figure out what we need to do. And, and everything is changing almost on a daily basis. None of us expected the spikes we're having. We have, we have, we're trying to figure it out. As I said, as we do a deep dive into the numbers, it's kind of from an all over community uh, spread. You know, we encourage people don't go to Mexico unless you have to. Uh, go shopping with only one, uh, have, have only one member of your family go shopping. And remember, we have, we have many multi-generational families. So uh, we will look, Judge Samaniego and I will discuss with the governor whatever options we have to try to stem 
this, this, the severity of these positives and the impact they're going to have on with hospitalizations and ultimately death. And remember, as I talk about statistics, they're people. Every single number I talk about is a person. And that's what people have to understand in order to abide by our uh, protocols, our, our uh, safe protocols. Is the governor willing to shut down El Paso if need be? I haven't talked to him. Okay. That's why I say we're going to visit with him this evening. I, I will say his response has been, uh, has been tremendous. Uh, Senator Cornyn has done, a, has done a great job for us in calling DOD. Uh, Congressman Hurd, the same thing. He's worked through FEMA. And uh, the, everybody is advocating on behalf of El Paso, and I'm gratified. And I think so is uh, Judge Samaniego as well. And we'll figure out what we've got to do to, uh, to address this. You know, as, as journalists, we, you know, sometimes we, we develop sources in hospitals that, you know, they, they tell us the nitty gritty that sometimes isn't, you know, so pretty. And, and one, one piece of information that I've gotten is that equipment such as ventilators are in high demand and in short, uh, you know. We're getting equipment too. Everything's coming in. The governor's sending everything we need. Ventilators, uh, respiratory therapists, nurses, physicians. Uh, DOD is also looking at that. We'll have uh, uh, from Beaumont as well. Um, um, and th they can help treat. And uh, so if we could just get some of the patients shipped that are non-COVID to, uh, to Beaumont, then we can maybe alleviate some of the crush that's, uh, that's affecting our hospitals, uh, our hospitals right now. And, you know, like, like you did say, nobody expected us to be here, yet here we are. And it seems like the worst may still lie ahead with uh, the holidays around the corner, Thanksgiving, Christmas, all that stuff, uh, you know, obviously, let's just reiterate that message that you've been saying all along since March, which is stay home, stay away from everybody. Well, we were, I was accused of being Scrooge for Halloween when we stopped that, and I know that's a big deal here, but we just can't. We can't do, we can't let our guard down until these numbers, which are people, and the positives go down, and, and we have a better handle on our, our um, hospitalizations and our capacity. Because remember, we're still start, we just started the flu season. And invariably during the regular flu season, we fill up our emergency rooms and, and hospitals with, with, with flu. And so that's why people still need, I, I want to reiterate, still need to, to, to uh, get their flu shots. We're testing now over 8,000 a day for, uh, for COVID. And it has really, really been positive. So it's given us more numbers, which will give us more positives. We still think we're less than 20% on the uh, on the positives being um, 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 asymptomatic. They're tw less than 20% are asymptomatic, so we're we're still dealing with that. Let's talk a little bit about you know obviously we've we've talked about everything that we need to do, but people aren't doing a lot of it was you know early on on the honor system like hey you know we trust you that you're going to be an adult and do the right thing and you know this was when the economy was slowly reopening. Let's talk about how that just hasn't worked and, you know, citations, where do we stand on that? Is there, you know, is there a need to up the ante here? Because obviously we're seeing the education task force now going out to Walmart, to those big chain stores to give citations to those uh, establishments. But do you think that just the regular citizen needs to feel a financial impact in their wallet to finally get this point across? Well, if that's what it takes to adhere to the, to, to the, to the, health protocols, yes. If you look at our dashboard, we talk about the number of uh, citations we've had and the number of fines, the number of visits. I mean, they've had well over 30,000 visits. And we've tested over 400,000 El Pasoans. And, um, you know, we're still, uh, we're just trying to, you know, work our way through it. Things change on a daily basis. Uh, I know there's a lot of uh, armchair quarterbacks and Monday morning quarterbacks out there. But I can assure uh, everyone we're doing the very best we can given the information we have at the moment. And we have prepared for these types of things on a regular basis. Some of the comments I get, well, are you all prepared? We have been preparing for this type of thing since April. That's why we have daily calls with, uh, with uh, our health director and our, and, uh, our um, um, Dr. Ocaranza is our public health authority for this and, and Chief D'Agostino. So we can look at where we are. We talk to the hospital CEOs on a daily basis. We get so everybody is informed and everybody's up to date, so that we can prepare for these type of things. 
see us last eight years, you know, or have we seen the contact tracing efforts improve? Uh, you know, one of the last times we spoke, Mayor, was people were just hang up the phone, not cooperate at all. Has there been a little bit of a change uh, as of late? I can't tell. I haven't had a chance to get into that lately because of these spikes. We've been focusing on hospitalizations, and I haven't really been looking at uh, where it looks like from a contact tracing standpoint. I do know we're we're pressing hard. That's one reason the city used CARES Act funding to purchase the former 911 building so we could do more contact tracings. We've got 270 contact tracers. That's more than the statistical uh, norm would be for a population of our size. So we're applying all of our resources financially and with, 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 with people that we can to uh, try to stem this tide. Jerry, do you want to ask anything? I do. Oh, I, I do have a question, and if you could look at uh, JC when when you answer, sir, uh, you you stated that the biggest percentage of these infections is coming from big box stores uh, like Target, like Walmart. Uh, I know they have the you know they have the, the corporate offices not in El Paso and all that, but the managers uh, they're still from El Paso. Uh, there's you know Walmart they used to wipe down all the carts. They're not doing that anymore. Uh, just in general, what would you urge the managers of those big box stores? What would you tell them to to kind of help out with this situation? Well, corporately, they already know, and they're they're doing more deep cleaning, and uh, that's one of the things we're talking about is is is, is maybe mandating a um, uh, more cleaning, more in depth cleaning at all locations, at all businesses in El Paso if, if this spread is, is, is continuing. Those are some of the things we're going to talk about this evening when I leave here. Um, but I do believe that, uh, especially I've heard from the Walmart, uh, they talked to us on Friday about what they're doing, and they are doing more deep cleaning. They usually shut down at night and do that. And I understand that they're gonna spend more time, more resources in doing a more a deeper dive on the clean cleaning like they're doing the dire store right now, which was shut down yesterday at as they announced at 2 o'clock, and will not open until tomorrow, all for cleaning. So that's part of it. Um, we've got to all do our part, and uh, we're going to look at everything we can look at to see what we can do to stem this this, this accelerated uh, tide. Anything else you'd like to ask, Mayor Margaret, or something uh, we forgot to ask you? No, I can't think of anything. Are you going to do this story, Brianna? Yes, sir. Do you have anything else? I'll switch uh, out. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, do you talk about like how many beds Beaumont's going to be able to let? Well, when we talked to them before, they talked about having the capacity of 300 okay. and then 64 in ICU. But what we're talking about is shifting only the non-COVID over there. I can see where the military would be concerned about contamination. So we're, we're just trying to get that worked out. And uh, that's, that's a challenge still in and of itself. But the four tents, that the four mobile health tents that are being set up that are pressurized tents are going up as we speak and they will I don't know exactly which hospitals are going to have their four that the state has sent us and then I understand some trucks are going to arrive on Monday that will do mobile mobile uh, could probably do mobile surgeries and and uh, add to uh, to our capacity here in addition to whatever we need. we're going to do whatever we whatever we need to do and as I said earlier we're uh, the judge Samaniego and I will be talking to uh, the governor's office tonight about what else we can do. Is there a possibility, a possibility that um, some of our COVID patients are going to be flown to other cities? That's always a possibility. Okay. We haven't we haven't done that yet, but that's that's a standby possibility that we're preparing for. That's part of our contingencies. Any chance you know how much capacity those four tents may hold? No, I don't. I haven't seen them, and I don't know what's what. I'm you know, um, I came over here to do this to, to try to give you all a quick update. I think that, that pretty much about does it, uh, Mayor. Thank you so much. Sure. Okay.